Hi, this is Jim Linnell. You know, I've been doing leather work for over 50 years now, and I've been teaching classes all over the place on behalf of Elk Track Studio. And of all of the classes that I've ever taught, there are none that are more important than what I'm going to show you right now. And that is, how do you get started in leather work? There are some basic techniques, some things that you need to learn, and if you learn those correctly, they will make a huge difference on how much enjoyment you get out of your leather work. So stay with me as I walk you through doing a pattern just like this, which will teach you how to use all of the most basic leatherworking tools. One of the things about a lot of the designs that we do in leather work, uh, some of it's very classic. Um, we use leaves and petals and things like that that have been used in in design work for for centuries. Uh, there's it's very classic uh, the leaves and petals and stuff like that. So um, we're not really creating something new and different here. We're just keeping a very old tradition alive. Uh, leather work like you're going to see done here has been done in this country since. Well, since the Spaniards arrived here, so um, I'm just passing that forward. So, when you think that you're all done, you think you've got all of these lines traced, the very first thing you want to do is check and make sure. I've got this taped down on the corners, and so I can pick up the, the, my tracing material, and I can look and see if I've missed anything, and uh, if I have, I can lay it back down and, and go back and, and catch those. But looks like I've got all of those lines traced on there, so let's go ahead and pull that paper away, and we'll get ready to uh, begin cutting this design into the leather. And that's, uh, that's one of the next things that we do to make this design stand out. So. This here, I'm going to introduce you to this next tool. It's called a swivel knife, and, and it's probably going to be one of the more challenging of the tools for you to learn to use. But uh, the first thing you have to do is make sure that it's working properly. So uh, here's the trick to that. Um, we need to strop it. You've heard of razor strop. Uh, some of us heard about razor strops the wrong way. But um, yeah, a razor strop was... Uh, uh, something that they used, uh, barbers used, to keep the edges of their their knives very polished, very sharp, so that they would cut cleanly and smoothly. And so I'm making something similar to that. I've just got a piece of cardboard here, and I'm using jeweler's rouge right now and rubbing it into that cardboard. Jeweler's rouge, well, it's the same stuff that a jeweler would use if they were going to polish rings and things like that. And um, that's exactly what it does here to my swivel knife blade. Um, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm polishing it. it, and you can see that dark color that's coming up on this piece of cardboard now, that's actually metal coming off of this blade. Um, it's putting a very fine polished finish on that blade, and it makes such a huge difference in how easy it is to control this knife. So um, this is one of the first things you want to do. Before you start cutting into your leather, make sure that this, this tool is ready to do that cutting. And then the next thing, after you've got it ready to go, you got to figure out then how to how to hold it. I mean, it it doesn't look like any kind of a knife you probably have ever used before. Um, you you uh, when I tell folks when they're first starting out how to hold it, I said just lay it on your your granite like that and then just pick it up. And that's pretty close to the way you're going to hold this tool when you're working with it. I'm going to hold it so that my forefinger here is resting in the yoke up to about the first knuckle. My thumb rests on one side, my middle finger is opposite that, and then I actually have my ring finger here resting against the side of the blade. And then this whole rest of my hand, it will kind of rest on the, on the granite or on the table, and then I make the cuts by angling the knife away from me just a little bit so that just the corner of the blade is in the leather, and then by pulling it toward me, I will uh, um, make cuts in the leather. And I make these nice curving cuts because this part up here rotates. That's where it gets its name, swivel knife. And the, uh, the trick to getting these cuts to come out nice and smooth with nice uh, fluid corners and so forth is to learn to rotate that knife as you pull it towards you. Um, sometimes I'll see beginners uh, struggle with this part. They will they will want to turn their leather or they'll be moving their whole arm or elbow or their wrist and everything trying to make that knife go around a curving line 
and it's really a fingertip controlled tool. We just make it go around those curves by just rotating it between our fingers. And I keep it always coming toward me, so when that I get to an angle where I cannot see where that blade is going to go, I'll stop and I'll turn the leather so I can see what I'm doing and I'll continue then cutting. But we always uh, always want to be able to see what we're doing. We are actually cutting into the leather, so you know, a mistake here now is going to be really hard to to cover up. It's going to be really hard to disguise, so um, make sure that you're uh, doing it uh, very carefully. One of the things I would have you notice is how slow and deliberate I am with this. I'm, I don't, this is not something that you try to do as fast as you can. When I um, first started out, one of the guys that I got a chance to watch do some leather work, oh, he was good. I mean, he'd been doing leather work for, I don't know, 40 some years by that time. And uh, when he used this tool, it was quick. Well, he was in the business of doing leather work for a living, and he had to get stuff done in a hurry. And so he was quick. Man, he could run this knife. He'd have this cut in just nothing flat. It wasn't always really super pretty, but it was done, and it was done pretty well. Uh, and one of the things, though, I learned when I tried to do it fast like that, uh, I learned that the secret of controlling this knife wasn't to run it fast. The secret, for me anyway, was to slow down and make sure I know how to make it run. Yes, I can cut a lot faster than this, but speed comes from learning how to use these tools correctly. When you're first starting out, don't worry so much about how long this is going to take or how long it's going to uh, require for you to, to work on this project. What I want you to focus on is how to use these tools correctly. As you get comfortable with using the tools, as you get comfortable making them do what they're so intended to do, you'll find that your speed will, will pick up. You'll, you'll develop a rhythm of, of, uh, on using these tools to where you're not having to consciously think about, okay, I've got to hold this tool just right and so forth. But, uh, and I, you know, the, the using this knife, getting these fluid cuts, I, it, it, I hope as you're looking at this, it looks really easy. But I want to remind you again that I've been doing leather work for over 50 years. Probably what I'm doing right now should look easy. If I've got it figured out at all, it probably ought to look pretty easy when I'm doing it. But some of the things I struggled with was, it was just being able to make good, clean cuts and make it follow the line. And that's, um, I think, the things that you'll be working with when you're, or when you're using this knife, too. So, One of the things to keep in mind is, again, this grip. This grip is so important. Sometimes I'll see folks, they'll, they'll, they'll get this, this finger wrapped clear around it like this, and next thing you know, they're trying to make a fist around their knife. And when you put a fist around your knife, you lose a lot of that control. And, it, and I will, sometimes will see people using this knife, and, and they'll, get, uh, they'll, they'll stop every once in a while, and they'll shake their hand out like this. And, um, you know, that tells me that they probably are getting cramps or or something in their hand. And if you're doing that, you probably are, are have your whole hand tensed up when you're doing this, rather than uh, letting the tool do its job. Um, this thing's called a swivel knife, and, and the way you hold it um, is really important. Uh, we have one finger here, the forefinger. This is, this is the only finger that does anything as far as applying pressure. All of the rest of these fingers should be relaxed. They're just simply guiding the knife along uh, as you're making the cuts. Um, the only th only part of my hand that's that's got any kind of pressure on it is the forefinger there and it's doing all the pushing down to make sure I get enough depth. And that becomes one of the next questions you get to ask is um, how deep should I be cutting right now? How, how deep should these lines be cut into the leather? And uh, a good general rule when you're first starting out is uh, to cut roughly about one-third to maybe at the most one-half the thickness of your leather. So when you're cutting on some thinner leather like I am here, that means you're probably not cutting as deep as you would as if you had some saddle skirting or something as heavy as that. One of the things that I often get asked um, by folks that in, in the classes that I teach is uh, they'll see me using the, the swivel knife that I'm using. They'll, they'll want to know is is that the kind of blade I should have? Is that the, the kind of knife I should be using? And, and uh, things like that. And uh, the thing that I, I would want you to know, I'll say this 
probably more than once before I'm done, but um, the thing that's important here is not what tool you have, but your knowledge of how to use that tool. Um, when it, uh, uh, for example, the swivel knife blade that I'm using here, it's a quarter inch straight blade. And you want to know why I use a quarter inch straight blade? It's because that's what I've been using for probably 40 of those 50 years. Um, and and that's, uh, that's what's comfortable for me. Uh, the one that you should use is the one that works best for you. Um, you probably, if you're just getting started, you probably have a straight blade that probably is maybe got a 3 8 inch wide blade in it. That blade will do everything that I'm doing right now. Um, the key is not in the blade, but it's again in having it polished up, having it uh, sharpened up so that it works smoothly, and then you learning how to control it. The magic isn't in the knife. The magic or the the important stuff is in the knowledge of the hand that you're running it. When you're using these tools, it's how much practice you're willing to put into it is what's going to determine how well any of them work. Um, so. I want to make sure that's clear right off. Um, when I got started in leather work, I started out with whatever the cheapest tools I could buy at the time were. They were just a, a basic set of tools, and it had whatever basic swivel knife came with it. And I still have those tools. They, I still use them. In fact, I may be using some of them on this pet project here. Um, but those basic tools haven't changed, and they still work just fine. One of the things, too, as you're cutting this design into the leather, one of the things I would uh, point out to you is that there are some dotted lines. If you, as you were tracing this design uh, into the leather, as I was tracing it in, you'll notice there's a little half circle in the middle of, the, of that flower that um, was put in with dotted lines. And as I'm cutting this design into the leather, those dotted lines are not cut. Everything else that I traced on here, except for the dotted lines, gets cut into the leather. And uh, that is, uh, the, uh, uh, those are there for a, a guide for me to, um, to know where to put the, the seeds when we get around to, the, to the, doing that, that part of the design. So um, all the rest of these get cut in. So. One of the couple little things, um, again, uh, little stuff that will help you improve your leather work along the way is uh, a lot of times as you're making these cuts, for example, um, you'll have cuts like these little Y-shaped cuts where you have uh, two lines that look like they come together. But if you were to look really closely here, you'll notice that my swivel knife doesn't actually run all the way into the other cut. Um, out here on these two tips where I have a pointed corner like that. They come very close together, but they don't actually, one cut doesn't run into the other. And and that's one of the things I would have you uh, be kind of careful about. Sometimes if you cut past the line, uh, thinking that you're just going to cut down into that cut, you'll leave a little nick in the leather, and sometimes those kind of things just don't ever go away. So. Um, there we have that design cut into the leather, and while it might look like this leather has dried out quite a bit, I, I can tell you that right now it's almost perfect to be working. Um, it's, you can see here a little bit of, of uh, change in the color here where it still looks kind of damp. And, uh, but I don't actually go by the color of the leather to determine whether it has the right moisture content in it. What I go by is how the tools react. and, 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 and you know how it feels. I can feel it with the back of my hand and it still feels kind of damp to the touch and kind of cool to the touch. But um, ultimately it, it comes down to how these tools are going to work. And so we're now ready that to, to stamp this design into the leather and we'll, we'll begin with uh, the camouflage tool.